Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to get this character moving around a little bit. We're going to get the level set up for gravity uh, and just make sure that when we test the game, everything kind of stays where it's meant to. Um, so let's just quickly test to see what happens now if we if we run it. See if we've got all the collision boxes right and settings correct. And if not, we can change things from there. Now, th thankfully, collision is a very easy thing. Sorry, not collision. Um, gravity is a very easy thing to implement within Stancil Works. Uh, it, it's just a matter of going to physics on the settings menu and then just choosing what kind of gravity you want, be that horizontal or vertical gravity uh, in either direction. So at the moment, there's nothing we can really do in the level, and because there's no forces been acted on in any particular direction, our actors aren't falling in any particular way. If we go to physics, we can set the gravity we want for the scene. In this case, we're wanting to use... Um, think 85 is usually a good one to go for so that should now affect all of the actors in the scene um, and we'll find out whether there's anything that should be kind of anchored to the level uh, I have a feeling that possibly the, the door hasn't had its uh, setting physics settings changed to match but we'll see so from here what we're gonna do is we're going to make our player move around. So be that left and right, and then also a very basic jump function uh, to be able to kind of hop up and down uh, <laughs> to no avail when the uh, stomper thing comes down to try and squash us. So, yep, so nothing's falling there, so everything is secure correctly. Um, I th it's kind of obvious that it is actually working because if we zoom in you can see that the stompers have just slightly fallen which they wouldn't do if there was no gravity um, and that's because their collision boxes are slightly smaller than what you know they are so they've sunk to rest on the, um, the doors so from here let's get basic player movement implemented so uh, let's go to the player, and I'm going to go to events. Uh, we're going to create a new event. Now, you'll probably all be wondering, like, on the last few tutorials, I've not looked into these two here. Uh, the reason I haven't is because you can, these are useful, but you can do pretty much anything that you can do in these two here, in these three basic uh, category events here. Uh, so I'm going to do my player movement all in updating. Um, because in the key input m m event you can't do um, sustained presses. So for example when it's held down that isn't an option with this. So for when control is either released or whether it's pressed. I don't know if that's something that Stencil is going to fix in time but uh, for now just use the always event if you're wanting to do things like when a key is held down. So I'm going to go to flow and I'm going to create myself an if statement. Uh, and that if statement essentially is going to be a question that has to be answered and has to be true in, or, or, uh, uh, in order for your, um, you know, for something to happen. So um, in this case it's going to be if the mouse is down, so, sorry, if the, if the control is down, and that control is going to be the right key. Um, and what we need our character to do is to move. So under the category of actor, it'll be motion. And we're going to alter his speed along the x-axis. So we'll set that to 20. So now if we test this, uh, when we push down the key, our character should move right. Uh, and then from here we can handle a variety of different things. Um, uh, 
Let's give it a moment. So, oh, yeah. And because I don't have any other controls, I'm now stuck here. But you can see that gravity's in effect. Um, so what I'm going to do next is, is I'm going to hold down Alt. And I'm going to click and oh, oops, click and drag to create a second copy. So I'm going to call this left. Or they'll choose the key left, and I'm going to set this key to sorry the the speed to negative twenty. Uh, now the reason negative twenty is because you want it to move in the opposite direction of you know moving right. Uh, quite a few people in the past have just used the same number for both, and it just ends up with them only been able to move in one direction. Um, so then what we need to do as well is deal with when released because otherwise your character will just continue moving. Uh, so I'm going to do that for each of these. So when right is released, set the speed to zero. So now we should be able to move left and right uh, within the space. Now, what we could probably do to, to add as well, whilst we're at it, is let's get our character turning. So we could do something along the lines of, you know, open up your character, create a bunch of duplicates, and come down to here and change the, you know, the animation based on which direction you're facing. So you could change it to idle left and idle right. But there's actually quite an easier way of doing this, which uh, is actually saves you having to create more images than you need. You can use the scale tool to, based on which way you're facing, scale the character. 